Welcome to part three of this mini tutorial course where we're checking out three of the biggest pitfalls of sound design inside of Massive. And we've already covered the first two. And in this one, we're going to be looking at don't be afraid to use the modulation or create macros inside of Massive. Too many times I see sounds that are made inside the synth or I pull up sounds myself. They don't have any macros or they don't have any modulation. The, the modulation inside of Massive is insanely powerful and it helps take, in my opinion, good sounds and can make them great. So that pluck that you heard in the last part of the video, we're going to actually recreate. And I wanted to show you what it sounds like with the modulation off. So there's modulation off. So I have a couple things going on with the modulation. I have probably about five or six different destinations being modulated. But if I just turn the fourth envelope to kind of sound like a pluck. And then compare that to this. Let me turn the, the modulation back on real quick on most of the destinations. Compare that to this. It's night and day difference. So actually, let's just start recreating this sound, and then I'll show you where I'm kind of thinking to modulate. And this will be applicable to a lot of sounds, not just plucks. Uh, it's just easy to show you with a pluck sound. So I'm going to make a new instance of Massive real quick and zero this guy out. So we're going to go File, New Sound. So first thing I'm going to do, keeping in line with the first two parts of this course, first I'm going to think, what type of sound am I going for? And then how does it sit in, how will it need to sit in the mix? So this is a pluck. So we're, we're going to choose a wavetable that is going to be conducive to some good high frequency content. So gentle speech, modern talking, deep throat, those might not be the best option. Those are typically, you know, the bass sounds or these FX chords aren't going to work. So I already have an idea of where I need to go in my oscillator. So I'm just going to keep this on a, let's just change it to a square saw too. I am now going to turn the wave tilt position up all the way. If it isn't, turn the intensity down a little. And we're going to keep the amp where it is. So let me copy this MIDI down. All right, sounds pretty basic right now, but we'll get going. So like I mentioned in part one, you got to kind of trust the process. Your sound's not going to be perfect right after you load up an oscillator and activate a wavetable. So that's going to be pretty much it for the oscillators. I'm going to stick to one oscillator because I'm kind of keeping in line with that idea of less is more. So let's go down to our noise, and I might change this to bright because I need this to sit above a kick. I need it to sit above the hi-hats and maybe even vocals, kind of not above, but definitely punch through. So I'm going to add a little bit of bright noise. All right, now let's go to our filters, which are which is important for the sound. I'm going to select a DAF filter. You could do low pass four if you'd like as well. So I'm going to turn the cutoff up to about halfway right now. Turn this resonance down a little. And the reason why I'm turning the cutoff down halfway right now is because I know I'm going to end up modulating this with an envelope to get that plucky sound. Because remember that this part of the tutorial course is on don't be afraid to use modulation inside of Massive. So I'm setting myself up for that. So I just know it'll sound better to modulate with an envelope than it will to turn the cutoff up and then maybe just turn my fourth envelope into kind of like a plucky sound. So. Let's keep going on in the filters. We're going to keep the mix all the way up to one. I mean, mix one, and we're not going to be using a second filter in the sound. Okay, let's go to our voicing tab and see what's going on there. I'm going to keep the unisono on on one, and I'm not actually really going to do anything. Um, if I'm not going to add any pitch cutoff, really. I'm not going to add any wave tilt position. Just keep that where it is. Keep it simple keep it clean. So let's go to our effects. I will add some effects right now just to kind of make this more of a fluid process. I'm going to throw on a little bit of delay. I actually do like the delay inside a massive for plucks and some leads. So I'm going to keep it on one over four for both the left and right. Turn the damp down a little bit, turn the feedback up. Might turn the right up to one over eight. All right, that sounds that sounds about right or how I want it. Now let's add a little bit of reverb just to give it some 
some space going back and forth into the mix. So I'm going to turn the dry, dry, wet, dry wet down, turn the size up a little. Turn the density all the way up and the color down just to give it a less bright of a reverb. Okay, now I'm going to go to the EQ. We talked about this in the first part of this little tutorial course where you kind of think ahead to your mix, right? Well, this is a pluck, so I don't need a lot of bass sound because it is with this kick after all, right? So I'm going to boost the high shelf a little and turn down the low shelf. And that pretty much squares away the sound before we start to actually modulate this guy. And that is actually fine. I am going to add some vibrato here. So I'm going to turn the, actually, we'll just keep it on the macro. So I'm going to just turn the vibrato up on this macro. So right now, it's really simple. It's just one oscillator, no modulation oscillator effects, just one filter. Uh, just a couple simple effects, no distortion, none of that, no huge amount of voices or anything going on there. Just pretty a basic sound that actually, and that's fine because it needs to sit in the context of a mix or in an EDM song with vocals over it or maybe building to a drop because you need your drop to sound bigger. So that's going to be fine. So let's actually get to this modulation. So now that we've made the sound, first thing I, I'm going to do with a pluck is the fourth envelope shape needs to be changed from the default. It'll typically have to be a little, turn your decay in just a little under halfway and turn the level down a little. And then what I might even do is I'm gonna add some release. Let me turn off this reverb because I want you to hear this release without the reverb. All right, so that will sound cool with the reverb and delay. Okay, so that, that plays into how I kind of played it with those spaces in between the notes right there. So uh, the more the rele more release I have, the better that kind of sounds. Okay, so let's actually now, I'm gonna add a little bit of velocity to that. Envelope. Just to give it a little bit more of an expressive feel. So now that we got the main envelope taken care of that's tied to our amp mod by default, let's start to modulate with with some. So I'm going to go, let's modulate the filter first. I'm going to create a shape in my first envelope that I'm going to use to modulate my cutoff filter. That's why I kept it around halfway. So I'm going to turn the attack all the way down. I'm going to turn the decay in a good amount, turn the level down, and I may even end up turning up this release like so. So that line on trig zero reset, once you turn up your release, should be in by the Z on zero. Now I'm going to modulate the first available box out uh, pretty much all the way in my first cutoff. All right, so it's starting to sound like a pluck, right? Well, let's take this a step further. I'm going to create a, uh, let's create a macro. Don't, do not be afraid to macro. They're extremely helpful. They're uh, very useful in sound design and massives. Like if I wanted to actually build into a drop like this, You know, you have that option. So don't be afraid to do that. It's one of the most powerful functions of Massive. And finally, these four uh, kind of master universal macro controls are great. I'm going to apply a little bit of velocity to the sound. So just a little. So then when I'm hitting notes at maybe a different value, uh, things will be a little bit, you know, it'll open up the filter a little bit more. And to do that, I'm going to have to actually now go into my piano editor and I'm going to selectively choose just a couple notes to kind of... So this one I'd want a little bit harder than these two. I'm going to go through and turn down the velocity just so that velocity control actually does something that we just created. And this is definitely something that is going to be to taste. So let's get this. And then I added a little bit of velocity control to this um, envelope as well. So we're starting to actually bring in those, those interesting kind of polishing touches to the sound. So let's 
keep going here. We got a couple more things to do before we round this plug out. Okay, so we have the first envelope done. We have some uh, velocity macro going. Now I'm going to go to the second envelope, and I am going to use this to modulate the pitch of my oscillator. Turn the attack down all the way, turn the decay down, turn the level down all the way, and now take this and modulate up to maybe like positive 48 or even 64. Do you hear that kind of snap it's adding? Just a little bit more high frequency content on the attack to help it sit above the kick. And then you can adjust the amount you hear by turning down this level knob. Okay, I'm going to use this same envelope to add my noise. So I'm going to turn the amp down a little bit and then crank this up. Because I want the noise not on the sustains of the note, I want it on the attacks. All right, so we're trucking right along. We don't have too much to do. What I'm going to do now is going to go to my fifth LFO, and I'm going to do a pretty cool tip and trick that you can do. I'm going to select this random random steps. We'll do random steps two, actually. Uh, and now I'm going to turn the rate down to, so it's pretty slow. Turn the amp down. Turn the X fade so it's mainly up towards the uh, first curve. And now I'm going to modulate just a couple destinations, just ever so slightly, just to kind of add some nice analog goodness. So it's a random LFO that will change parts of your sound. So I'm going to do it to my intensity on my first oscillator. I'm also going to go to my first envelope, which is modulating my cutoff filter, and apply it to a couple parts of that. Let's do the attack, so it's not always a consistent attack on that filter. And now I'm going to do it to the level, too. So with this envelope, this is a really expressive envelope now. We have a velocity control controlling the amount that it opens up the filter. We have, an, we have a LFO that's in random steps controlling the attack and level. So just some things to make the sound a little bit more fluid and kind of get that analog feel going. All right, and finally what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a pretty cool trick and, trick and trick I like to do. So let's open up scope and see how this is sitting in the stereo field. So right now it's like, it's pretty much mono. Uh, it's, it is stereo, but it's because we only have one voice and there's, no, there's not a lot of width to it. So what I can do is I'm going to take this first envelope we created, drag it into the pan box here, and I'm going to drag this down and out so towards the left. And now I'm going to go to my third envelope, and we're going to create one more custom envelope shape here. I'm going to turn the attack up, and it needs to be different than this first envelope. So the first envelope, very short attack, very short level of decay and sustain, just a, a good amount of release. So with this, what I'm going to do is kind of do the opposite of that. Give it a little bit of attack, keep this level up, keep the decay up, keep this level pretty much all the way. And I'm going to keep the release down uh, pretty much to where it was by default. Right, and now let's take this and modulate to the right in our pan position, and let's see how our stereo field now looks on this plug. Do you see how it kind of starts on the left and then fades over to the right because that envelope? So now it's actually a, the bulk of it's going to the right, which would be cool because if you have a vocalist and things like that sitting center and kick, it's going to fit better. So let's listen. Okay, and I just added a little bit of detune just to kind of get it a little bit wider. So there it is. So again, the, if I turn off the, the modulations in the macros here, let's turn everything off real quick, and we'll see how, how this actually sounds without it. And I'll start to turn them back on again.
And there you have it. So do not be afraid to use those modulation destinations and macros inside of Massive. And I will say, typically it's best to start to play around with those once you have the bulk of the sound made up, whether it's a pluck, a lead, or a bass. So if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And I hope you enjoyed this uh, kind of short form mini tutorial course on the five most, or five, not the most maybe, but five common sound design mistakes that myself and everyone kind of will drift to make inside of Massive. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.